In Tower Defense Simulator, you can obtain skins for your towers, which changes their appearance. These skins don't have any effect, except for a special type of skin. Gold skins can be obtained from the Gold Crate, which can be purchased for 50,000 coins. They can also be found circulating in the shop, but they come at a higher price. These skins change certain aspects of a tower, but in general, they greatly increase their power. Because each skin requires a huge amount of work, you might be wondering which tower you should get. There's six gold skins in the game, that being the Golden Soldier, Golden Cowboy, Golden Scout, Golden Crook Boss, and finally, the Golden Minigunner. In today's video, I'm going to be ranking these towers, as well as giving detailed descriptions of their uses and capabilities. Before I continue, do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe to join the Blue Hair Mafia. It helps me out a lot, and I really appreciate it. The Golden Minigunner is a high-cost, high DPS tower. It costs 3,000 cash to place, so it's not considered an early game tower. It can be used to deal with the wave 13 and 15 hiddens. However, it only unlocks hidden section at level 2, which costs a total of 5,750. Its main use is in the late game. At max level, it costs a total of 23,250 cash and has a DPS of 103.45. Unlike other heavy DPS towers, the Golden Minigunner has no placement limit. 20 Golden Minigunners have a total DPS of 2,069 and a total cost of 465,000. That's a higher max DPO than the Excel and only slightly less than the Engineer. While the Golden Minigunner is definitely a powerful tower, it's outclassed. When it was first added, there wasn't an awful lot of competition, but now we have so many towers with insane DPS. Currently, there really isn't any good reason to use it over the Ranger, Accelerator, or the Engineer. It just doesn't have enough DPS to make it a good choice. I'm going to rank it as a B-tier tower. For 50,000 coins, the Golden Mini ends up being a bit disappointing, but regardless, can still be useful. The Golden Scout is one of the highest esteemed early game towers. It's really cheap, only costing 200 cash. That means you can play three of them on the first round. Three scouts can easily carry you in the early game and allow you to spend more of your money on farms. At level 2, it gains hidden detection, which means it can be used to deal with the wave 13 to 15 hiddens, though you might need a few of them. In some cases, the gladiator is better due to it having splash damage. However, the gold scout is much easier to use. Because of its short range, the gladiator needs to be placed right next to the track to be effective. This is impossible on some maps, such as the heights. The only problem the Gold Scout has is it's really only good in the early game. It falls off quickly, having a pathetic max DPS of 36.76. Even if you place 20 Gold Scouts, you'd only have a total DPS of 735.2. I'm going to rank the Golden Scout as an A tier tower. It is undoubtedly a fantastic early game tower, but it has competition from the Gladiator, who is both amazing in early game and can deal some serious damage in the late game. Maybe if it got a little bit more max DPS, I would rank it an S tier. For a long time, the Golden Soldier was considered the worst gold skin. Its stats were underwhelming, and it had a crippling bug. The Soldier attacks in bursts, with the max level Soldier firing 12 times in a single attack. However, if the enemy the Golden Soldier was firing at died before the burst was completed, it will stop firing and go into cooldown, not finishing its burst. Fortunately, on the 21st of March 2023, its burst was fixed, and it also received some significant stat increases. The Golden Soldier cost 475 cash to place. As long as you've joined the Paradoxum group, you'll actually have the exact amount of cash needed for a level 1 soldier. After the buffs, the Golden Soldier has become a really solid early game tower. It's cheap, deals good damage, and at level 2 gains hidden detection. That means you won't have to bring another tower to deal with waves 13 and 15. Unlike the Golden Scout, the Golden Soldier actually has some pretty good late game potential. It has a max DPS of 54.35 for a total cost of 11,450. It has no placement limit. So with 20 Golden Soldiers placed, you end up with a total DPS of 1,087. For comparison, 8 excels have an average total DPS of 1,666.64. So for an early game tower, that's not bad. Though I wouldn't recommend only using the Golden Soldier as your DPS, it can definitely be helpful. Considering its early game capabilities, hidden detection, and that it's usable in the late game, I'm going to rank the Golden Soldier as an A tier. No, this might be a hot take, but I'm actually going to place it ahead of the Golden Scout. You what? I just feel like it can do what the Golden Scout does, and has more uses. Though feel free to let me know what you think in the comments. The Golden Cowboy might not have the best DPS, but it makes up for that with its unique mechanic. Every 6 shots, the Cowboy generates bonus income depending on its level. Other than the farm, the Cowboy is the only tower that creates extra income. That means the Cowboy has by far the best value out of any tower, and in most cases, actually generating more cash than you spent on it. It costs 700 cash to place. That means you'll have to wait one wave before you place it, however, that's doable and you won't leak very much. In the early game, the Gold Cowboy definitely does not perform as well as the Golden Soldier or the Scout, but the added income allows you to upgrade it quicker, place more farms, and have a much easier late game. It's also not a terrible late game tower, having a similar max DPS to the Golden Soldier. 
Because of how important its extra income is for difficult strats, I'm going to rank it as an S tier tower. It might not have the highest stats, but there really isn't any tower that can do what it does. The Golden Quirk boss costs 600 cash to place, meaning you can place it on the first wave. One thing that I thought was interesting is it's actually cheaper than the normal version. It can handle a few waves by itself, but it quickly ends up needing some upgrades or support. At level 2, it gains the ability to spawn crooks. These are units that stop and fire at any enemies within the range. As a crook levels up, these guys can rack up some serious damage. By itself, the crook boss has a max DPS of 72.46 for a total cost of 13,000. That's actually really good, being a similar value to the gladiator, and that's without including the DPS of the units. The crook boss is able to spawn up to 3 units at once, so in total, they have an added DPS of 75.96. If we put that onto Crook Boss's DPS, we have a total DPS of 148.42. That's 44.97 more than the Golden Mini, for almost half the price. Units are a bit unreliable though, as they can be killed by the Fallen King Stomp, or get killed by ramming into enemies. Even though it has fantastic value, it's held back by its placement limit. You're only able to place 4 Crook Bosses, which adds up to a total of 493.68 DPS, which is the lowest maximum DPS out of any gold tower. Because of that, it ends up being pretty much only good in the mid game. It's alright in the early game, and pretty bad in the late game, and because of that, I'm gonna rank it as a B tier tower. Still definitely much better than the Golden Mini though. The Gold Pyro is a true rags to riches story. It used to be the worst gold skin, having hardly any difference in stats from the base pyro. This changed significantly with the gold perk update, and now deals far more damage, has hidden detection from level 0, and is probably one of the best crowd control towers in the game. It costs 800 cash, so you're unable to place it on round 1, but once you can afford it, it'll easily carry you against any crowd of enemies. Its flamethrower attack damages any enemies within the radius of attack, meaning that there's no limit to how many enemies it can kill. While it doesn't have the greatest single target damage, I found that two level 2 pyros can handle the level 10 boss really well, as well as easily handle any hidden enemies on wave 13 to 15. I say it's probably the best tower to use against hiddens. It also has some good late game support, being able to melt the defense of enemies. Many people misunderstand what defense melting does. No, it does not make every enemy take more damage. Certain enemies, like the giant boss, have an extra defense percentage that reduces the damage they take. The Golden Pyro is able to diminish this stat, allowing your tower to deal more damage against those enemies in specific. While the Gold Pyro's DPS falls off in the late game, it's one of the best towers from early to mid game. It's so good at clearing crowds, you don't have to worry about hit-ins, it's cheap, and it can handle pretty strong bosses. Because of that, I'm going to rank it as a solid S tier. I'd say it's so close to being better than the Golden Cowboy. However, because of the Golden Cowboy's uniqueness and how needed it is for some strategies, I'd say it's the best gold tower in the game. That's all the towers. While I think gold skins are a cool idea, I think they should be fundamentally changed or removed, as they limit how powerful the base tower can be. Basically, the Crook Boss can never be an amazing tower by itself. If they made the normal Crook Boss really good, then the gold skin would be overpowered, so they have to keep the Crook Boss a little bit underpowered in order to make sure that the golden skin can be good, yet balanced. And if they decided to make the gold skin not that big of a difference, it wouldn't be worth the 50k you have to spend to get it. It's a pretty flawed system. They did leak some plans to change the golden skins to new evolved towers, however, that was years ago, so who knows if they're actually going to do it. So, do you agree with this tier list? Let me know in the comments down below. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, and subscribe to join the Bluehead Mafia. My name is Corso, and I'll see you on the next video.